Hi, hello, welcome to the Grafon Show. Already, already Friday Eve. Matter of fact, this will be my Friday. Uh, well, Brandon, when you chase kids. Yeah. <laughs> you chase them all the way. Found out yesterday I got to take off Friday to go to yep. go out of town for a day or two. So anyway, mm-hmm. anyway, great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, it's your opportunity to be a voice, and we are loaded to load it up again. Load it up again on the program with all the stuff that's going on. But we're going to jump gears and bring in former rep, business owner, right here in the great state of Louisiana, Mr. Brett Guyman, will join me. Brett, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm good this morning. How are you? I am being superb, man. I just wanted to let you know I'm going to treat you with kid gloves today, nice as I can be. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Yeah, I am. I can tell you why. It's be kind to someone ugly week. <laughs> Uh, you knew they had a kick line coming, like Brandon. Hey. Brandon sitting over there going, "Boy, where's the where's the line? Because it's coming." Uh, oh, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> anyway, pre- appreciate you joining us. Boom. Yes, sir. Boom. Thanks for having me. And before before you treat me with kid gloves, I I, I need to <laughs> I need to ask you about this rumor that that's going around at least where I live, and that's you're going to run for Secretary of State. Is there any truth to that? You know what? I'm starting to look at it, I believe. It's, uh, you know, uh, the only name I saw up on the list is Julie Stokes. And uh, Nancy Pelosi cannot win that position. So I thought, you know, uh, why shouldn't I look at it? Oh, you know, okay. why, 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 why shouldn't I look at it? I mean, Julie Stokes is the only one going to run? Gee whiz. M- Moon Grafon for Secretary of State. <laughs> I can see the signs on the highway now. <laughs> Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't too, and you're not going to like what some of them say. <laughs> well, Dave, look at the bright side. If if we you if we buy all the billboards up, there won't be no more lawyer billboards for a while. <laughs> true, true. That's, that's why I ought to get in it, uh, just, to, just to buy some billboards. Anyway, boy, I'll tell you what. I, you know, I'm glad it is. Be kind to of someone ugly week, because I believe I'd have you today. <laughs> anyway, Brett, a uh, lot going on. I, I tell you. I, I'm, I'm almost threw up last night, and I talked to you last night, and now I read it. Uh, as you know, the, the advocate in the, in the mainstream press, they hate Bobby Jindal with a passion. They blame Jindal for everything. By the way, people are starting to email me with these funny la- crying faces and laughing because of what you're, you're us talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine emails you're going to oh, get today. I don't know emails, the text messages I'm getting from people that really know me. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking up, and as you know, they, they said General caused all these problems, and he's the problem, and Bill Edwards inherited this. And anything was around General, they run away, but not the advocate. They they wrote an art. They let... Uh, Two former general guys, Paul Rainwater and uh, Tim Barfield, write an opinion piece and put it in the Advocate. It headlines two former general staffers. We will all lose without Republican support for the sales tax. And I, I'm floored hmm. by this. I'm really floored <clears throat> by this. I, I, I'm not sure floored is the right word, but yes. And, and, Moon, I don't even know where to start other than you have Team Jindal, the budget policy advisors to Team Jindal, yep. Paul Rainwater, who, by the way, is a friend of mine, so this is not personal at all. Yeah. Paul Rainwater, who was commissioner of administration, that's the job that Jay Darden has now. Correct. Chief, chief of staff after that, which which is the highest ranking uh, office there is in the cabinet, uh, under under Governor Bobby Jindal, uh who, as we all know, um, horrible budget issues with the with Team Jindal and the fiscal hawks used to used to used to uh, oppose some of the things that Bobby Jindal tried to do. But here's a guy, Governor Jindal, whether you like him or not, would never have promoted an increase in taxes. Okay, and now he'll use one time money and he'll use yeah, games agree. and gimmicks and all the things, but never would have promoted. Uh, an increase in 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 taxes on the on the tax paying citizens of this state, and here is Team Jindal coming out and basically throwing the conservative Republicans under the bus yep. publicly. Yep. And I am appalled at this because because first off, I know these guys. I've sat across the table from them and and most times argued with them over budget policy. But I know these guys, and to think that they would go after 
you know, the conservatives who might think, you know what, government's growing faster than the economy, I don't want to raise a half penny. Maybe no. I don't want to raise any. Maybe I only want to raise a quarter. Maybe I only want to raise a third. Basically, he is throwing all of them under the bus and saying, it's your fault. Yep. It's Washington-style politics if you don't compromise and do what the Democrats want you to do. Oh, it's no doubt about it. Matter of fact, if you read the article, it's all the same stuff we heard from the left and raising taxes, the children and tops and this and that. But the point I wanted to make on this is these are guys, budget guys for Jindal, and the press said the Jindal and his people were so bad. Yet when they want to come out against the Republicans, now all of a sudden they have credibility. These people are now 100 percent credible. <laughs> it's just it's comical to, to, on social media last night to see all of the those folks cheering on the team gentle guys <laughs> like they were heroes. I'm like, hold on a minute. You, wait a minute. This can't be happening. I mean, two and a half years ago, they were the devil. Now we need to beat up the Republicans that are trying to do something right. And now they're heroes overnight. They made heroes. <laughs> well, look, here, both of these guys are lobbyists. Yep. I doubt. Uh, again, this is not personal. Again, Paul is a personal friend of mine. Uh, both these guys are lobbyists. I doubt very seriously Paul is worried about how he's going to pay his next health insurance premium check, you know, this due next month. I, I doubt that he's worried about how he's going to make payroll to small business next month. Uh, you, you know, he's in a different world than we are. He's, he's a bureaucrat. So is Tim. Good guys. I like them. They're bureaucrats. They come from another world. They don't understand what the common folks out there like, like us go through every day. And, and there's nothing in that opinion piece that defended or respected or took up for the taxpayer. It was all about we have to fund government even though moon government is growing at a rate faster than our personal income faster than our gross domestic product faster than our population growth we're number 50 in the economy across the state i mean across the country yep. according to the business insider report in may of 2018 and wallet hub despite, has this 51st. despite all of that despite all of that he just says hey all you republicans quit being washington dc style politicians and just both of the half cent no. It's amazing that he did that. No, it is. Him and him and Barfield both did it. They, they both their names are on this thing. I'm a, I'm just shocked. But they didn't make any point why they took all the talking points that everybody else has been making on the left. Every yeah. single one. Yeah. And they put it in an article and said, this is what we need to do. And they don't talk about the economy. They don't talk about the GDP. They don't talk about government growing Nothing. more than the uh, economy has by two to one over the last 10 to 14 years. Nothing. They just throw Republicans under the bus. Moon, how can a guy who used to be the commissioner of administration, that is the position that crafts the budget every year. That is the Jay Dorton job, as, as we know today. How can a person who has done that do an opinion piece and, and, as you just mentioned, never mention the economy, never mention that government should be indexed to the growth in the economy like other states do. By the way, Moon, did you know there's states out there that return money to the taxpayer if they take in too much? Yep. They send a check back to the taxpayer? I mean, other states index their government spending to the growth in the economy. We, on the other hand, spend all the money, and then we go chase the revenue. And mm -hmm. we've been doing this for I don't know how long, but as long as I can remember. Well, I just but think these, it's... These guys, it's just the thing that irritates me the most is that they would publicly throw under the bus someone who might be a fiscal conservative that's currently serving in the legislature that was duly elected by his or her district, by the people that they represent, basically saying no more conservatism is needed in the state capitol. None. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things about it, and, and maybe I don't agree or disagree with you, but a little different take, is that these guys architect the general's budgets that the press and the media and the governor and Jay Darden them had bickered and complained about, and that they had to do all this, they, they, and the Senate passed their version of budget, which the general group, including these people, went went over the whole eight years he was there, the two years that Bill Evans has been at three count this year, and we've not fixed one thing. We've been in trouble every year. And for the press to take this and say, hey, guys, y'all help us out. Y'all gentle people. We want to give y'all credibility again. 
But they don't have, they have less credibility now than they had before they left, and they didn't have none when they left. It, it's just, it's, I can't even get my hands around it, man. I can't even get my hands around it. I see and, why and, you and, were disappointed. And, I see why. It, it, and, the, and the thing is that, that what it's telling me, which is, is more clear to me this morning than it has ever been, is that we are greatly outnumbered. I'm talking we being the average hardworking taxpayer of the state of Louisiana. We have very few people batting for us. You, you are one, and, and perhaps the AFP, Americans for Prosperity Group, and some of the others. Very few, count them on one hand, the people that are taken up for the taxpayer. Yep. Yep. And now you have Team Jindal of all people yep. coming out and attacking the taxpayer by saying, hey, you conservatives out there, quit being Washington, D.C., style politicians and just vote for this half cent because government needs to function well let me ask you a question when this doesn't work and they go to year two three whatever up the road and they need more taxes then i mean when does it stop it never stops it never it's stops. not going to stop moon and it's not going to work because they're not fixing anything they're just generating yeah. revenue to pay for what they've already spent well let me tell you something if, been- the, if the media and the and the edwards darden uh, co-governorship are counting on the gentle people to solve this we bees in trouble. Yeah. Brett Guy, my special guest. We we just Brett told me about this last night. And I thought, oh my God! When I read it, it was worse than what you said it was, and it's bad. Uh, Secretary, I mean, uh, Brett Guyman, my special guest. Hey, Brett, you ought to run. It keeps flowing off my lips that you ought to run. Stop! Stop it! <laughs> stop it! Stop it! Let, let me just put that to rest. Stop it! So, um, I said, what the hell? I know how you can get some good advertising going, uh, yo, Brett. I, <laughs> I, I can talk to our people here and you know, get you set up with some good commercials. <laughs> Brett, you see, you I'm see. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you broke up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you try to get money out of guy, but I'll get good luck with that. Anyway, that, Brett. That's right. Uh, I'm the fiscal hawk. That's right. You're not getting any money out no, of me. No, no. Talk to his wife. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing uh as we continue to watch this, I, I hope Republicans can hold on. But you're right. What happens is everybody gangs up on the people that are the good guys who give in. There'll be enough of them give in. Give in. It's just like we had Bishop and Cousin give in on the earned income tax co- tax credit. And when I saw that, I was flabbergasted by it. But yet those are two guys that could easily give in on this tax deal. Yeah, Cousin and Bishop could easily give in on this. Yeah, I mean, look. Just to put it in perspective, if if you live in a district that has elected a conservative-minded legislator, which there aren't a whole lot of them, but there are some, uh, you just have to know they are under tremendous pressure from every possible angle for them to cave. If they if they firmly believe in principle that they should not raise taxes, they're going to get hammered daily by every bureaucrat, yeah. every higher ed president, every hospital administrator, every nursing home owner, and it just won't stop. And now you have Team Jindal, Team Jindal coming out yeah. and hammering them and saying, hey, quit being Washington-style politics. Let me tell you what Washington-style politics is. It's bureaucrats. It's lobbyists. It's people who have grown up and lived and worked in government. They have no idea what the real world is like. And all they want is money. Just fund it. Just fund it, Moon. We don't care where you get it. Just fund it because we need to fund all these programs and take care of all these needs and make sure the saints are happy and everything else. It's just you know, unbelievable. If, if unbelievable. everybody could get a grip around the stagnation and the pain that we've had in our economy, especially since the governor came in, all in gas industry, but the pain, it's no way in the world they would ever give in. They wouldn't give in. They just wouldn't. No. And, and, and Moon, the problem is the they're oil, getting pounded. They're getting pounded. That's right. And, look, if you're in the oil-related industry, if you're a supplier or if you're directly involved in the oil industry, you've either lost your job, you've taken a tremendous pay cut, or you're hanging on by a thread. You know, the GDP is at the bottom. Population growth is at the bottom. Personal income is at the bottom. We're number 50 in the country, in the economy. Yep. And, and I don't see how anybody thinks raising revenue through taxing individuals is going to help any of that. And Paul Rainwater never mentioned one economic Nothing. indicator. Nothing. Not one word about GDP. Nothing. Not one word about the taxpayer as an individual and the burden that we're putting on them. In his article promoting, just get along and compromise and do what's best for the state. Let's do the moral and right thing and just vote for increased taxes. By the that's way. That's what we need because we lobby for 
the hospitals and we lobby for the government agencies and we just need your money. Let me, and and it's just disgusting. Yeah, let me give you this. Paul Rainwater is a lobbyist with Cornerstone Government Affairs. He represents a variety of clients, including the University of Louisiana Systems and the University Medical Center. He's, he's lobbying. He's lobbying. And then he writes a piece. And I'm telling you, these people, credibility is shot down. But the people in the media for putting this in there has no credibility. And Tim Barfield, president of CSRS consulting firm, often involved with government projects. These are the guys they putting on this bar. Look at the credibility. I mean, they have no credibility, but the press has none either. Well, Moon, look, again, as I said earlier in the show, um, I'm personal friends with Paul. This is nothing, you know, personal between him and I at all. We disagree on, on budget policy. We always have. I can remember this, sitting across the table from him at 11 o'clock at night on the 11th floor of the state capitol during, during Bobby Jindal's reign as governor with Cameron Henry, Lance Harris, John Schroeder, and Jim Morris, if I remember the, the group in the room, while we were fighting to get rid of the one-time money used that Governor Jindal always did, and saying, we want to work with you, Paul. Tell us where we can make some cuts to mitigate some of the use of this one-time money. He looked at us and said, we can't cut anything else. Oh, I know and that. somebody said, how about just show us one penny? One penny. He said, there's not one. Now, this is a guy who is now out here saying, Hey guys, don't be conservatives. Just vote for the taxes. But he's also it's just but he's, unbelievable. But he also did that with Jindal, which, according to the press, they have no credibility. Now they have credibility because they're right. But look who he represents. Look who he's lobbying for. He's well, lobbying for people that need tax dollars. I mean, and, Rainwater, and Rainwater, and Barf- have embarrassed themselves in my book. Well, and they were the one-time money champions while they were running the budget policy for Team Jindal. So yep. I mean, I. I don't understand how they have credibility either, but it's just comical to watch how many in the media and many uh, many who who are pro tax are out there praising them today. It's well, the just, thing it's I, just the, amazing. The thing I do, I know about you and me. We sincerely telling the people what's going on. If they choose to look the other way, there's nothing we can do about it but pay the taxes. That's all we can do. Anyway, Brett Guyman, good luck, man. If you run for that position, let us know. No, <laughs> Moon, stop it. All right, thanks, man. Thanks Brett for Guyman, me. thank you. Always a good guy. All right. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Fighting for real people in this state of Louisiana on a daily basis. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Guyman had told me about these these two bozos that were with. Uh, and I look, I'm not friends with neither one of them and don't want to be. These guys right here were architects of Jindal's budgets that we've heard over and over and over and over and over again, shoved down our face. Bill Edwards inherited $2 million from Bobby Jindal and Bobby Jindal's budgets, which I say again, John Alario in the Senate, and before Alario got there, has passed their budgets. Harris and Guyman and Cameron Henry and all these people on this other side, they were voting n- to change this. When Jindal came in, he wouldn't do it. Started grabbing one-time money everywhere. Okay? So all of a sudden, they're trying to pass taxes and shove them down our throat despite our economy being what it is, which is last. We're not even close. We're negative. And you're taking... Two Bobby Jindal staffers, Paul Rainwater was the J. Darden of Bobby Jindal. Neither one of them worth a flip, but that's okay. They, they, that's who they were. And neither one of them are doing what's right, and all they ever wanted was more money. And they screwed the budget up, and so has J., uh, Darden and Darden and all his tax increases, which I told y'all this guy was a major liberal. And now all of a sudden, we got the Jindal staffers, two of them, Barfield and Rainwater, to the rescue. We need more Republicans to throw the conservatives under the bus, like Rob Shadwan's done and Nancy Pelosi and Julie Stokes has done. This is the problem. And they picking Republicans off, folks. That's what Edwards and them are doing right now. That's what bothers me about Stuart Bishop and raising taxes, y'all, Cousin, because they were picked off on the earned income tax credit, where they picked those two Republicans off again. They're getting easy to be picked off like the rest of them because they have no matter of fact, I, I just just for a little history lesson, Brandon, I picked up John Paul Cousin's rate. Uh, John Paul, y'all, I picked up his uh, little brochure he put out when he was running. 
Here's one of the, I'm reading off of his now. I make this up. I'm reading his, his own words. Smaller government. John Paul is opposed to any increase in taxes. Any, by the way, he's voted for billions. He will fight to shrink the size of government. That's what he said. He will fight to shrink the size of government. Uh, when does he start doing that? He raised taxes. As the only business owner in the race, John Paul would champion lower taxes for family. Well, John Paul, how was raising that one cent sales tax on families and a cell phone tax helping us families and the earned income tax credit that's got to come out of the taxpayer's pocket? I'm telling you, him and Bishop bother me now on this because I think they can be bought. He would champion lower taxes for families and businesses so that hardworking families can keep more of the money they earn. This was John Paul Cousin. This is what he ran on. This is what he told people he was running on. Now you got words out there when I watch him and Stuart Bishop switch over on the earned income tax credit. Watch those two guys as being two Republicans. I'm just reading what the guy wrote. Just reading what he wrote. I'm just telling you, this, you know, folks, and, 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 and Gaiman's been there and he said something, and I'm asking you folks to really do something. If you don't call your rep, especially Republicans, Cousin, Bishop, and these people, and tell them they better not keep raising these taxes. We have a GDP problem. We have a job problem. We have our migration problem that we can't fix by raising taxes. It cannot be fixed. You better call them because the people that are calling and getting on them are the ones that are sucking up on government. The ones that want more money and they don't care what the economy does because they think it doesn't fix that. They think they don't think it affects them. So that's why you got a Cousin Bishop combination on the earned income tax credit. I remember they voted for that. Well, they vote to give more money. This is a sin and a shame what this governor and co-governorship is doing to us. And then here we come. We're giving credibility, showing that the media, especially the advocate, has no credibility. All we want to do now is one thing. Raise them taxes, y'all. Brandon, when I read that from John Paul, you don't have to make a comment. Did that sound like a guy that was going down there to vote for taxes? Does that sound like a guy? Matter of fact, perfect brochure for all Republicans or what they were going to do, they weren't going to put it on the Louisiana families. And then they do opposite. Wow. And then here comes Rainwater and Barfield, who led the charge for Bobby Jindal's budget, and the advocate gives them credibility now, and Jim Beam gives them credibility now, when they used to say it was all Jindal's fault, they inherited it, it was horrible. But these are the guys that help architect the budgets. And they're coming back telling us to raise taxes. They were wrong then. And they're wrong now. Of course, I was the only one called it out for about, what, seven years before the press came along? And here's what I like. You talk about throwing Republicans under the bus. This is in the article that these two uh, Jindo, the Jindo team wrote. Neither party has a monopoly on good idea or bad ones. Do they sound like conservatives to you? And we're proud of the work to streamline government and renting spending on behalf of the people of our great state. But at, we're at a moment in Louisiana history where we simply cannot cut our way out of our budget. Problem. Everything they said in here, they looked like Brandon. They were reading it in the media, in the advocate. And all they did was rewrite it and print it and put their name on it. I wouldn't even be surprised if they didn't even write this. They could have went to Tyler Bridge and said, Tyler, write it. We'll sign it. That's what it looks like. It looks like they go to Stephanie Grace and say, sign it. We'll write. Hey, Jim, would you write us an article? And we'll put our names on it. That's what it looks like. There's nothing else to this. And then what does Rainwater do? He's a lobbyist for Cornerstone Government Affairs who represent a variety of clients. He represents the University of Louisiana system and the University Medical Center. He's looking for more money. And there's old Tim Barfield, president of CSRS consulting firm involved with government projects. And they're supposed to have credibility, and they came from the general organization. Nothing about, again, I don't think they wrote the article. I think the article was written by Jim Beam or, or, or somebody in the advocate, and they said, look, sign it. And they signed it. And all of a sudden, they have credibility. 
all of a sudden the guys that the press have been beating up, the gentle team, now have credibility because they beat up Republicans. And then they'll get people like Bishop and Cousin to go vote with them. Because Paige Cortez told him, yeah, vote with him. Just pitiful. Absolutely pitiful and sad to see the good people lose in this state. As long as the liberals, Republicans and Democrats, run this state, they're going to run it into the ground. As long as they don't ever change the direction we're going, we will never change in the direction we're going. Try this. Get on the interstate and go east. And, and say, I want to go west. You know, Brian, I ain't raising taxes. Go east, but never turn around and go west. You're never going west. You gotta stay going east. You got to change directions. You got to pull over, slow down, turn around. We don't want to turn around. What we do is we press the accelerator harder. It's just shameful, shameful what rainwater and uh, Barfield has done. They were losers in the general administration. We were told by the press that the general administration was, I told y'all they were doing horrible. But they would, but the press came along and the printed media and said, these guys are horrible. Look what General's done. And they put together an article, which I don't think they wrote, they signed off to. Because it doesn't say anything different than we've been reading about on a daily basis. I'm not reading it all because what, they have no credibility. They didn't have any credibility with me when they were with Jindal. They didn't have any credibility at all. With the press until they were wanting to beat up the other Republicans. And then they lobby in for government. I mean, we're screwed, folks. And then you got people like Bishop and Cousin who they can get on a, just a whim to vote liberal. You know, it counts as a vote, a tax vote. If you voted for the penny and you come back and vote for the half cent, folks, you voted for billions of dollars worth of taxes. And all somebody got to do is get the voting record and run against them. All right, your comments are welcome, 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Fighting for real people in this state of Louisiana on a daily basis, 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. And by the way, I'll be going tomorrow. Mark Pope in tomorrow. I know John Kennedy will be one of the guests at uh, 1006 tomorrow along with more, because I've been called out, and i got to take care of some family stuff, So, and be back on Monday. Uh, didn't even know until yesterday. So, by the way, you remember we had none guests on the other day, Brandon, and we got into the budget stuff, and I told him what perception looks like reality, right? Mm-hmm. Billy was making the point that he didn't, he's not for raising taxes and things of that nature, and I just told him the perception is, and I was one of the ones on him, that that's what it was. Well, Billy, they keep writing in the newspaper that perception thing I was telling you about. They're writing it, and this is what people are seeing. This is what people continue to see. Stephanie Grace, as she remember, I told you, to, especially the advocate John Kennedy came out and said basically, if if John Bell Edwards can't run the state and he needs to resign, well, I, mean, I have no problem with that. I wish he would. Uh, so. Stephanie Grace and the advocate already came out here, Kennedy, and they're going to. And they're going to do this continually because they want Bell Edwards to be reelected. He's not going to be reelected, but they're going to do everything they can. So anyway, in the article, this is what she said. This is one paragraph, and this is what I was trying to tell none guess. Quote, people who follow politics more closely, that certainly includes the senator. Surely also know that Billy Nungesser made a big show of reaching across the party lines at the start of the last session appearing alongside Edwards and urging fellow Republicans to put party aside and fund government priorities. If Nungesser were to become governor, listen to this now, there's no indication he'd do anything different from what Edwards is doing. Now, Brandon, you heard us kind of get into it a little bit, and I got into him before about it. What is it? What does that sound like to you? Man. Sounds like he's endorsing it on the, t- on well, the but, side but, of Governor but, but, but John Bell Edwards. But what did I, what did I tell I you? Know. It sounded like the perception. This yeah. is what the belief in the press is. Yeah. And this is what a belief a lot of the Republicans believe now. Because they saw it for, with, the, with their own eyes. Mm-hmm. They witnessed it. And when they did the invitation, it was none guess or Edwards. And people are going to go more with what they see with their eyes than what you want them to read what the actual speech said. Because remember, he kept saying, hey, people can read my speech and they can read what I actually said of the thing. 
But, like we said, the appearance of what's going on, like you said, perception becomes reality. Let me ask you a question. What's the old comment? A picture? Is worth a thousand, a thousand words. words. Yeah. And it was a picture of him hugging Edwards. I saw right. it. Somebody had sent it out. And uh, I, I'm just, that's why I try to tell him. I'm just being honest with him. And when Stephanie Grace writes that you you came across party line, but now this line at the end really is a sticker, Billy, and you need to get with the press. If none guessed that he was talking to Kennedy, of course, they were taking a shot at Kennedy. They ain't going to defend Bill Edwards. And it says, if none guesser would have become governor, there's no indication he'd do anything different from what Bell Edwards is doing. Except I hope he wouldn't hire Jay Darden, but that's just me. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd throw that in. So to anyone who takes Kennedy seriously on this, the joke's really on you, and Kennedy's the one who's telling it. But we'll see about that when election comes. I just, I just that's what I was trying to explain to Billy the other day. Okay? Mark Rainwater. And, and Barfield were the architects of all these budgets that Jim Beam and American, uh, the Lake Charles American, not the Lake Charles American Press, but the Advocate and the Times Picayune and the Gannett newspapers and all, all these people wrote these articles and dogged them out. And yet they give them a slot in an opinion piece that I'm convinced they didn't write it because if they wrote it, they just went through articles on the Advocate and wrote what the Advocate said. Or they have somebody like Rainwater write it and sign a name to it. I, I'm not going to accuse Rainwater of doing this because I don't know that, but somebody may have wrote this from him, for him, and I'm almost convinced that, the, that somebody in the Advocate wrote this. So it's uh, I'm just telling you. That you give credibility. The press is so hypocritical. They don't care about the truth. The people in the, especially the printed press in this state, they don't care about the truth. So they're now using two gender, the gender team to make it clear. Make it clear. The gender team to make it clear they want to pop Republicans and pop them in the mouth. But, you know, you got to worry about the bishops and the cousins because they'll turn on you in a second. It's, it's, it's pitiful. It really is. It really, really is. Uh, I got this the other day. Yesterday, he went to the Chamber of Commerce. He said this is what he heard. Chamber of Commerce meeting from Louisiana senators. The choice we have to approve a half, quarter, a third of a penny, and that no other choices were available. Walsworth, Clutch Walsworth, always votes bad in the clutch, who, by the way, was in the House, was in the Senate. I heard he might go back to the House. Walsworth lectured us on accountability and how he was fighting for us. He told the House members that he would sign whatever they kicked up to the Senate. Francis the Fee Thompson made it clear that his decision didn't impact him on his R's wallet. He also told us that the same thing happened under Roman Blanco and from the Louisiana governing body had been using one-time money to plug the holes, but the fund was depleted down to where it wouldn't help. As though the fee who votes for every tax known to mankind, who, by the way, he was in the House for 400 years and the Senate for 12, he's going back to the House. Big Lake Fannin. Made sure we understood that Louisiana government couldn't even sustain its existence with a half a penny. And what we would be right back here t soon talking about the same thing. He also made sure we understood that growing the government was in our best interest. This is Big Lake Fannin, a Republican. Changed the Republican to win. And my friends in Monroe and elsewhere voted for this man. This man was the architect of Bobby Jindal's budgets. He was the main guy, the main squeeze, the guy that screwed it all up with with uh, Alario. He's sitting in the Senate, growing government as a Republican. He said every one of us, according to this person, every one of them told him cuts have been implemented and the spending was not the problem. And there's our problem. Walsworth, who's been there forever. Francis Thompson's been there since right after God put Jesus in existence. Big Lake Fannin, the liberal leftist Democrat who was a big part of Bobby Jindal's team, still there. 
John Alario, still there. Jay Darden, still hanging around. These are the major players. These are the major players. And we wonder, boy, well, nothing changed. We have raised taxes, dang it. We've raised them and raised them and raised them and raised them. And all it's done is killing our GDP, killing our jobs. People think this is still the answer. Can you imagine what people must be doing laughing at us, thinking these are so-called leaders in Louisiana? We're going to do the same thing we did last year, two years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 80 years ago. Let's keep doing the same thing. They, let me tell you something. They really don't expect different results. The results we're getting is what we keep voting for. When we let a guy send out a brochure, I ain't voting for no taxes on the Louisiana families raising taxes, y'all, and all he does is vote for taxes. It's amazing. Simply amazing. I'm fighting for you every day, folks, because... They're not fighting for us in Baton Rouge. And the ones that are fighting for us are getting smaller. Brett Guyman said that. When Team Jindal comes on here and basically prints what the advocate writes or has somebody in the advocate write and they signed off, I bet that happened. I just got a hunch that Barfield and Rainwater never wrote a word. Somebody wrote it, they signed off to it. Because all they did was print stuff that they put in the advocate every day. Does anybody out there want to change this state? Or do we just want to stay mediocre to last? I don't understand that. And the same players are sitting there. So you go to a chamber meeting yesterday and you hear from the state senators, Walsworth, Thompson, and Fannin, who might have 100 years together in the legislature. But no changes and no fixes. But take a break. We'll be right back. 